have a good time. Put a smile on your face, yeah. Keep me caring. Elation Radio. Mm-hmm. Even brighten your day and help you through the night. Bring you good music. Keep me caring. Elation Radio. And here's your host.
Well, good evening and welcome to the Just For You podcast with Pastor Michelle Y. Wright on Elation Radio. I'm so glad that we were able to meet again another week. Listen, we have so much to be grateful for. I know, I know it snowed in the wonderful city of St. Louis. It's been icy. It's been cold. But we did not have to be here. So for that, we give God all the thanks. I want you to concentrate on this week, this podcast, at this time, how grateful we truly, truly are for everything that happens in our life. I know we want to talk about blessings, but listen, there is a blessing even in your trials. Remember that there is that we learn when we go through things in this life, and that is something to be grateful for. I just want to welcome you all to the Just For You podcast. We're so grateful that you're here and that you took time out of your schedule. I am so grateful for you. So we send a shout-out to all of our listeners, Those that are listening for the first time, those may have just come on and and wanted to get this exhortation and word, we say thank you for joining. If you've been here for weeks, thank you for listening again. I want to send a shout out to our very own producer and visionary, Dr. Kimmy Robinson, to my husband, Pastor Donald Wright Jr., to all of you, and of course, the guest of honor, as always, for each and every podcast, is our Abba Father and our elder brother, Jesus. I just want to say thank you, and we love you to all. If this is your first time listening in to the Just For You podcast, I would love to share with you what the Just For You podcast is all about, and you will hear that momentarily, all right? I am excited about Just For You. I want you to grab your pens, your paper, all of that, so as we begin, you'll be ready to dive in. The Just For You podcast is designed to encourage, empower, and engage listeners to thrive spiritually and naturally, utilizing biblical principles. Just For You will reveal truth in the Holy Bible to illustrate kingdom living, soul winning, compassion, and strategies to serve mankind, making a difference locally and globally. Just For You will allow listeners to hear teachings that are applicable, guests that will inspire, and opportunities for serving more effectively in the home, church, school, community, and marketplace. That is what Just For You is all about. I want to find out how was your week on this week. I know we've all had some things, as I said, going on, but guess what? It's always working for our good. Never think because you've had a couple of things happen that it's not working for your good. Romans 8 and 28 reminds us And we know as believers, as those that adhere to the word of God, we know all things work together for good to those who love him and are the called according to his purpose. So therefore, there's a precedent that's always set, that when it comes to the word of God, it is open to all who will receive it. My question today is, as a believer, a listener, are you in tune with the word of God? So on today, we're going to talk about 
unlikely visitation, unlikely visitation. What are we talking about? It's found in Mark, the fifth chapter. I'll begin reading from the King James Version. Please follow along. That's the King James Version. Okay? And they came over unto the other side of the sea, into the country of Gadarenes. And when he was come out of the ship, immediately there met him out of the tombs a man with an unclean spirit, who had this dwelling among the tombs, and no man could bind him, no, not with chains, because that he had been often bound with fetters and chains, and the chains had been plucked asunder by him, and the fetters broken in pieces, neither could any man tame them. And always, night and day, he was in the mountains and in the tombs, crying and cutting himself with stones. And when he saw Jesus afar off, he ran and worshipped him. Let me stop right there. Two important parts I'd like to bring to your understanding most of us that are familiar with teens and the cutting, I want you to know there is nothing new under the sun. When we've heard of people cutting, it originated, as you can see, in the word of God with this man who was with an unclean spirit. First point. The second point is when he saw Jesus from afar off, he ran and worshiped him, all right? I want you to hold those two points because they're going to be critical as we read a little further, all right? And he cried with a loud voice and said, what have I to do with thee, Jesus, thou son of the most high God? I adjure thee by God that thou torment me not. Here he understands he's in the place and in the face of Jesus, and he automatically knows his lifestyle has not been one of a believer. His lifestyle has not mirrored someone that would follow Jesus. So here Jesus is in an unlikely visit to this man where he comes out of the ship and he comes and he worships him. In worshiping him, he identifies Jesus for who he is. Now, at this moment, he's thinking he's already judged, going to be tormented, going to be killed. Important point. When Jesus sees him and he comes to worship him, let's hear what happens. For he said unto him, come out of the man, thou unclean spirit. And he asked him, what is thy name? And he answered, saying, my name is Legion, for we are many. And he besought him much that he would not send them away out of the country. Now there was there nigh unto the mountains a great herd of swine feeding. And all the devils besought him, saying, Send us into the swine that we may enter into them. With Jesus gave them leave. And the unclean spirits went out and entered into the swine, and the herd ran violently down a steep place into the sea, and they were about 2,000 and were choked in the sea. And they that fed the swine fled and told it in the city and in the country. And they went out to see what it was that was done. And they come to Jesus and see him that was possessed with the devil and the legion sitting and clothed and his right 
mind, and they were afraid. Listen, when Jesus shows up with an unlikely visit, you must know there will be a change. I hear people say, when I come in contact with Jesus, I am never the same. But I need to wonder and ask, what does that mean? We come in contact with Jesus as believers in our churches, in our places of community, in places we find him, and there should be a change. I'm concerned if when we come in contact with him as the man that was filled with many spirits, he had an unclean spirit, he immediately knew who Jesus was, worshipped him, and Jesus himself made sure he was clean. Listen, I need you to know today, whatever you're fighting against, Whatever controls you, whatever makes things out of order, whatever allows the enemy to have a grip on you, that the word lets us know that Jesus him made sure that that thing didn't possess him and that it went into the swine and from the swine it went down a steep hill into the sea and they were choked and they were gone. And it was over. There are some things coming to the body of Christ and those believers and those on their way into the kingdom that some things are just going to choke, die, and leave you alone. It's not going to hinder you, overtake you, and cause you your demise, but you will live in God. And the enemy's job is to kill steal, and destroy. If he can allow us to believe that we are so gripped and we can't be free, then we will never, ever experience the fullness of an unlikely visit. Jesus can visit you anywhere you are. He visits prisons. He visits hospitals. He visits homes. He visits the homeless. He visits wherever He deemed himself to be worthy to stand to help someone in need. I don't want you to believe on today that you are beyond help. I need you to connect with the Lord, that he can make an unlikely visit whenever he deems necessary. See how critical it was for the man to come and to worship him. And they come to Jesus, 15, and see him that was possessed with the devil and had the legion sitting and clothed in his right mind, and they were afraid. And they that saw it took him, took them how it befell to him that was possessed with the devil and also concerning the swine. And they began to pray him to depart out of their coast. And when he was come into the ship, he had been possessed with the devil, prayed him that he might be with him. How be it, Jesus suffered him not, but saith unto him, go home to thy friends. And tell them how great things the Lord has done for thee and has had compassion on thee. Let me read that again. How be it Jesus suffered him not, but saith unto him, go home to thy friends. In other words, they knew who you were but go back to show them who you are and tell them how great things the Lord hath done for thee. As believers, whenever he makes a change, whenever he gives us strength, whenever he heals our bodies, whenever he corrects our minds, whenever he gives us a heart change, we need to be able to go back to those that knew us in the condition before Jesus came, that they can see what 
the Lord has done. This is how people know we serve a risen Savior. And then and have had compassion on them. This is a lesson for all who are attached to the kingdom of God. Compassion is a word we must live and not just talk about. It is a place we are to give to those in need of his love and his grace. It is a place that we must explain the travesties that come when people don't listen. Compassion prepares you for God's blessing, but it also can compare you and prepare you for his wrath. Listen, at the moment the man with an unclean spirit saw Jesus, he had an immediate decision to make. He could have ran back into the mountain and ignored him, but he chose to run to him. As believers, it is our job to believe this word. It is our job to believe that our Abba Father and elder brother Jesus loves us so much, no matter what condition we're in, and they are sent to make an unlikely visit at any time to assure us, to strengthen us, to help us to keep us, to give us instructions on what it is we are to do. And if we hear them when they speak to us, we will have the same outcome that the man with the unclean spirit has and that we're able to go back to our families, go back to our jobs, go back to those that knew us in a broken condition to see that Jesus had a commitment and a time with us with his compassion that is different. So in other words, we talk about salvation, but it's not really salvation unless you're saved. I'm going to say that again. It's not really salvation unless you're saved. In being saved, we do the other part. We go back and we give God all the glory. So you should never be in a position that when God blesses you, you don't go back and give him all the glory. It is his that he's given you for you to be able to share with compassion who he is. So we must remind ourselves at all times that we are here for his doing. We are here for his assignments. We are here to fulfill his divine will, and to give him all of the glory. And he departed and began to publish in Decapolis how great things Jesus had done for him and all men did. And when Jesus was passed over again by ship unto the other side, Much people gathered unto him, and he was nigh unto the sea. So listen, once people hear of the goodness of God, they choose to gather to learn more about him. In our services, in our ministries, in our communities, in our homes foremost, we should gather to hear more about who he is and what he does. Why is that important? Go back to our great-grandparents that have taught us about the word of God. They taught their children. Their children taught their children. Their children taught their children. Why? Because it makes it relevant in our families who are God and what our faith is. As we live in this life, The compassion that Jesus had was for all men, women, boys, and girls to know him. It is vital that we take the time to show that compassion, to pray, to seek the face of God, that his will be done in the earth. As one who states that we are a believer, we must live it out that someone who is as the unclean man, when they are in our presence, because Jesus is in us, that they will feel 
such compassion and want to know him for themselves. Our job as believers, as witnesses, are to give Jesus, our elder brother, and have a father to someone else. You can't give it to him without wisdom, without love, and without grace. People themselves can irritate and frustrate so much that you can walk away. But here we find the compassion of Jesus. That compassion led him to change a life that many more lives were changed because he realized the power of what Jesus did for him and that when others saw him in his home, in his city, in the areas he traveled to, they would know who Jesus was. Does anybody know who Jesus is when you are present? Or do they assume they know? Are we illustrating the power of God through his word, through his living, by the way we carry ourselves? Or do we just assume it just happens when we give the preacher his hand? And behold, there cometh one of the rulers of the synagogue, Jairus, by the name. And when he saw him, he fell at his feet. If you don't get anything else, when you come in the presence of Jesus, you will fall at his feet. And besought him greatly, saying, My daughter, my little daughter, lieth at the point of death. I pray thee, come and lay thy hands on her, that she may be healed, and she shall live. And Jesus went with him, and much people followed him and thronged him. Why? They followed him because they knew of the miracle with the man of the unclean spirit. And a certain woman, which had an issue of blood 12 years, and had suffered many things of many positions, and had spent all that she had, and was nothing bettered but grew worse. When she had heard of Jesus, came in the press behind and touched his garment. Two things I want you to pick up here. Everyone that saw him worshiped him, and they had enough faith to believe that he would do exactly what he said. They worshiped him, and they had enough faith to believe he would do what he had said and what he had shown them. For she said, if I may touch but his clothes, I shall be made whole. And straightway the fountain of her blood was dried up, and she felt in her body that she was healed of that. And Jesus immediately knowing in himself that virtue had gone out of him, turned him about in the press and said, who touched my clothes? And his disciples said unto him, thou seest the multitude thronging thee, and sayest thou who touched me? And he looked round about to see her that had done this thing. And the woman, notice this is the second case, that someone came to worship him, touched him, was close to him, and feared, feared that something would happen in a negative sense to them. But the woman, fearing and trembling, knowing what was done in her, came and fell down before him. And told him all the truth. And he said unto her, here's compassion again, daughter, thy faith 
have made the whole go in peace and be whole of thy plague. While he yet spake, there came from the ruler of the synagogue's house certain which said, Thou daughter is dead. Why trouble the master any further? As soon as Jesus heard the word that was spoken, he said unto the ruler of the synagogue, Be not afraid, only believe. And he suffered no man to follow him, save Peter and James and John, the brother of James. Here he defines, everybody can't go. When he walked in this state, because we went from the man who was possessed and had an unclean spirit to the woman with the issue of blood that was immediately dried up. Now we're in a whole different dynamic. We're talking death itself, the finality of life. And that meant that Jesus would have to resurrect her from the dead. I'm here to tell you, Jesus is coming to resurrect that which is dead and bring life again because he did it. He did it in the Bible. He's going to do it again. And he coming to the house of the ruler of the synagogue and seeing the turmoil and them that wept. And wailed greatly. And when he was come in, he saith unto them, Why make ye this ado? And sleep, and weep, rather. The damsel is not dead, but sleeping. And they laughed him to scorn. But when he had put them all out, they had no belief. They had no faith. He taketh the father and the mother of the damsel and them that were with him and entered in where the damsel was lying. In other words, keep anybody without faith in a dead situation where it seems like life has to be brought back in out of the scenario. He put them out because they didn't have faith. And he taketh the father and the mother of the damsel and them that were with him and entered in where the damsel was lying. And he took the damsel by the hand and saith unto her, Talitha Kuma, which is being interpreted, damsel, I say unto thee, all right, hallelujah. And straightway the damsel arose and walked. For she was of the age of 12 years, and they were astonished with a great astonishment. And he charged them straightly that no man should know it and commanded that something should be given her to eat. May the Lord add a blessing to the hearers, readers, and doers of his word. Did you understand in all of those scenarios there was compassion. He had compassion for the man with the unclean spirit. He had compassion for the woman with the issue of blood. And here he has a bona fide compassion for this child, 12 years old, that was sleeping, as he said. This is a reminder to us. Whenever life gets heavy, Whenever it seems like you can't see your way out, whenever it feels as if Jesus doesn't love you, whenever it gets to the point that you're so overwhelmed and overburdened and heavy laden that you can't make it, he reminds us here in Mark 5 the compassion he has for each and every one of us. The baby, he said, was sleeping. And surely she arose. And when she arose, he went a step further 
to make sure she was fed. I want you to know he's making sure today that we are fed. Fed the word of God. Fed with faith. Fed with the understanding that he is who he is. He does what he does, and he loves us completely and wholly. So when the enemy comes, and he comes to destroy what you know is not the truth, the truth is he loves us. He died for us. He took stripes on his back for us that we would have life and have it more abundantly, that we would be healed. When the enemy says one thing, the doctors say another. We were born to believe that he's able to do anything but fail. And in our believing him, connecting with him, he will do it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He will do it. So we receive the word. We believe the word. We walk by the word. This is why it is important to listen, to read, to evaluate, to study the word of God. Because the word applies to each and every one of our lives. What you may be going through today may be different than what I'm going through, but one thing is for sure as a believer, we all need him. We may need him differently for different things, but because he is our elder brother, because we do have an Abba Father, we can run to them and find peace. We can run to them and find joy. We can run to them and find provision. We can run to them and find healing. We can run to them and find whatever it is that we need, but we must be able to come. It is important to come to him. See, this world will offer you everything. And there are so many believers that are so far away from him because they don't possess compassion, neither do they follow his word. We are to not only believe in our heart, but we are to confess with our mouth. We should stay right there, be close enough to him to take in the essence of who he is so that we know how to treat others. And listen, even if you mess up, to know to go back to him, to repent, ask him to heal and help you, give you strength, and allow him to do a work in your life that someone will see you like they saw the man with the unclean spirit, that someone will see you and whatever your infirmity is, that they may know Jesus is alive and well, that someone may see you and me and know the compassion he gave is what we present so someone else can come into the kingdom too. This is critical. We are living in a world where at oftentimes the Bible talks about it in Timothy, how men and women will be lovers of themselves, that they will not be compassionate. They will not be compassionate. To see someone in need or bow down with something and have the tools and the help that they can give. But instead, they choose to use it for themselves to become lovers of themselves. The Bible also talks about intimacy. They will become unthankful. They will feel entitled as if everything is supposed to go their way and they are supposed to receive this or receive that. May I tell you that is a dangerous way to live. He has allowed us all to understand that if it were not for his grace, where would we be? Each day we have a choice and a decision to make as a believer to follow him. Will we get it right every day? Maybe, maybe not. 
But if you find yourself torn, I'm going to say to you today, run back to him. Just as the man did with the unclean spirit, the woman that felt in our spirit, I can be healed if I touch the hem of his garment. And as J. Iris had faith enough to believe that his daughter would rise again. Here we have an opportunity, a place of discernment, a place of evaluation, a place to make a difference. It is vital, vital to understand. For such a time as this, are we all living that are connected to the kingdom of God to give him glory and to bring him honor. He knows where you are. He knows what needs to change. So often we look at the outward appearance of man. Ever see the wickedness in the heart? Do we ever see the jealousies or the covetedness or the things that would keep us far from him? Only the Lord knows. And what he will do when we say we need him is to heal us where we hurt. He's there to help us so that we can become all that he created us to be, to be mirrors just like him. It is important for us to understand that he is Lord. I love this passage on so many different levels. It lets us know we're not alone. It lets us know that we can come to him and when we worship him. Do you know what true worship is? It isn't just the song. It isn't just being in service. You can worship him at home. You can worship him wherever you are, where you're led. If he sees that he wants you to minister to someone, That may be the only hour they have to get to know him. Are you going to tell them, can you wait till Sunday, till we go to church, and God forbid they may not make it till Sunday? We must use wisdom and hear the voice of God to move as he tells us to move and to do what he tells us to do. To remember he is Lord and he makes the final decision over everything concerning our lives. So if you don't know him in the pardon of your sins, and you've been saying, maybe I'm not good enough, maybe he doesn't love someone like me, I have this flaw, I have that flaw, may I remind you, the Bible tells us there's no good thing in the flesh, and that's for all of us, that this is the thing that keeps us humble, that keeps us running to worship him. Because we recognize it isn't by our own goodness. It isn't by how many scriptures we know or how many books we've read in the Bible. This is personal. And I often say we look at people with the outward seat, but the inward heart is what matters most to God. We must make sure our hearts are right. What we talk about at the beginning of the year and we're fasting and we're praying, it's deeper than let me just go get some food and it's not um, anything with meat in it. Um, it's not that we, we must be in a position to understand when we've done all of those things that it still is a heart matter. And he's after our heart, our mind, our bodies, our spirits, and our souls. We're one. So therefore, we must govern all of those entities. And that's not an easy thing to do. You learn this from being connected to the Lord. So I just came on to encourage you to not give up, not give in, to trust his presence.
process for your life. It may not feel good, but it is good for you. And if you follow him, you're going to see the end result. As the man came to worship him with an unclean spirit, he walked away from him healed and whole. I pray today that you will get an unlike will change everything concerning you, that it is for his good pleasure and for your good, that you will have an unlikely vision for him to be glorified. And don't forget whatever he does from your unlikely vision, that he just pops up or something just happens, or he does something wonderful for you, that you never forget to give him the glory. He is far more able than you know. And he cares enough to be with you all the way. I want to thank you for listening to today's exhortation. Truly, it is a blessing to share the word of God, to learn the word of God, and to understand the word of God. He is able to do anything but fail. He is mighty. He is strong. And he is loving. So I thank you again for participating, listening, taking notes. Listen, all those things matter. Because that's how you stay close to him. When we're on uh, from 5.30 to 6.30 and we're doing the exhortation, it is for us all. It isn't just for um, a certain type of person. It's for us all to gain a closer walk with him, to gain a closeness to him, that we can continue to serve him in love and in compassion. So I thank you for that. I want to share if this is your birthday month, and we happen to be on the first day in February. How cool is that, that the Lord blessed us to see the first day of February to all of the February birthdays. God bless you. We celebrate you. If you just had a birthday, maybe you bought a new car, a new house, God has ordained you in ministry. Perhaps you're doing a new kingdom work. Whatever it is that is important to you that is worth celebrating, we want you to know here at Just For You and Elation Radio, we celebrate you. Now, maybe that didn't happen for you, but maybe you found out your experience. We have a few people that we know that the Lord is blessing them with their bundles of joy. And, man, are we excited and waiting on them to come. We have some graduates that will be graduating this year. We are excited for them because we know God is doing great and a marvelous thing. We say congratulations to the Brewer family. The Brewers, God bless you on your baby coming. We say congratulations to Candace Whedon. She will be graduating from high school, and we want to support and say we celebrate you and all high school students. I want to say congratulations to her sister as well, Hannah Whedon. Hannah's doing something pretty cool. She's getting ready to travel to, I'm going to say it, I'm excited for her, Paris. Hallelujah. To be so young, to experience Paris, would you lift her up? that the Lord will continue to bless her, that all of her expenses are paid, and that everything will work well. Listen, her mom is the coolest. That's Dr. Kenny Robinson. For more information, please look her up on Facebook. If you'd like to contribute, if you'd like to support Hannah in this effort, We thank you in advance. We're super excited about it. And for any high school student that are traveling the country, 
to learn more about what those countries possess and how their gifts match, we celebrate you. We also understand on the other end of the spectrum, there are times when death, sickness, and other things occur. Perhaps there's a job loss. Maybe there's something that someone is going through that's close to you. We want you to know that we are praying for you. We want you to know you're not in this thing by yourself. Here at Just For You and Elations Radio, we are praying for you. I want you to know that everybody has a place of need. And because we have a place of need, we as believers depend on the Lord. But in this natural earth, we need help at times. At United Way in St. Louis, we dial 211. They have services and resources to help us through such needs so that we're able to get the assistance and the help that we need. We also have United Way um, in St. Louis. Again, that's United Way 211. We also have Urban League. That's U-L-S-T-L dot com. You can look them up. They have over 55 programs. They also have uh, services that will assist, and they are getting prepared, get this, to have a bank for their organization. Isn't that awesome for the community? So uh, great things are happening here in St. Louis. We're super proud of all of the community organizations, St. Louis County Library. St. Louis County Library offers flow kits, which are female products for those in need, as well as diapers for your baby. If you're interested in receiving either one of those, please, by all means, Contact the St. Louis County Library. If you're in the city, you can also contact the St. Louis Library. They will be able to give you information as to how to obtain these items. In addition, get a book, rent a movie. They're there for so many things versus us just thinking, checking out books. As we all know, we're all gearing up for the Black History Month. We're going to have some pretty cool guests on. We want to thank you in advance for tuning in. Please note on your calendars that we're going to do Black History Month in a way that God wants us to do it to celebrate those that have accomplished great things. And I want you to know You are one of those people. We don't have to have great titles, but we do have to have great hearts. And I admonish you to continue to do great things in serving. We all are assigned to serve that someone can know who Jesus is through the way we live, with the compassion that we talked about, the grace that he shows, and the love. So just know. You're in the history books with the King of Kings when you give your life to him. I want to say that our African-American culture is a beautiful culture. You know, I want you to know that it has gone through. We go through so many things in life. But at the end of the day, when we talk about history, it it starts with each and every one of us what we choose to do for the greater good, how we choose to respond in times of justice, what we do to make our world a better place. It can't be a better world without black history. So I said it, I believe it, and all cultures are important, but February is the month for black history, and we want to support it, and we want to let others know how important it is, all right? Also, we want to share with you, we have a lot going on with Elation Radio on Friday nights, the fourth Friday of every month. It will be our From Ashes to Beauty segment with the women of Elation. Listen, we had such a phenomenal time 
last Friday. We invite you to be with us on Clubhouse at 9 p.m. Central Standard Time, 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. On Mondays, you can find Pastor Stan and Michelle Wright for Kingdom Wisdom Weekly. That's on Mondays at 8.30 p.m. Central Standard Time, 9.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. On Wednesdays, meet me back here on Elation Radio at 5.30 p.m. Central Standard Time, 6.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. In addition to that, United Community Services will be doing some great upcoming things, and we will be telling you about what's going on. If you have a community announcement that you'd like to hear on this platform, please send it to me. It's Michelle, M-I-C-H-E-L-E, right, W-R-I-G-H-T. You can locate me on Facebook, inbox me. You can also email me at leading, right, leading, like you're leading someone, L-E-A-D-I-N-G-W-R-I-G-H-T at gmail.com. We'll be happy to read your community announcements. Thank you, thank you to the women of the Black Women Networking, Missouri and Illinois. We had an awesome time with you on Friday. We love spending time with you, and thank you for the invitation to speak. We are so pleased to know that so many of the business women there are connecting, and we're grateful for that. So thank you again. We also want to say thank you, as always, to Elation Radio. Listen, our platforms are growing. Our our podcasts are growing. We're on on Elation Radio 24 hours a day, seven days a week. You can find us on the digital platforms. Look for Elation Radio. You'll find Just For You with Pastor Michelle by Wright, as well as other platforms uh, for our other podcasts and those that are on. So listen, we celebrate everybody. I want you to know no dream is too small to keep looking to the hills from whence cometh all of your help and all of your help cometh from the Lord thy God. If you know of young people doing exciting and wonderful things, I'm asking you to please send me their names and their information. We'll be talking about some things coming up, but we are looking for young people doing exciting and wonderful things, and we want to celebrate them. Would you give them our email, leadingright at gmail.com, that's leading right at gmail.com or inbox me on Facebook. And that is Michelle with one L, M I C H E L E. Last name is Wright, W R I G H T. Well, listen, we come to the close of another podcast. Please check. Uh, and listen in for more announcements. We're going to be doing some more exciting things with Elation Radio. We believe in celebrating the Word of God. It is the founder and our visionary's heart, as well as those that serve to continue to do a great job. We love our Elation family and their families, and we love you. So please tune in next week for Just For You with Pastor Michelle Y. Wright, we're going to pray out. Father God, thank you so much for coming into our podcast, for doing what you do best, for giving us a word that is revelatory, a word that is feeding us, a word that will help us in distressing times. Give us wisdom on what to do and how to do it. Show us how to be compassionate in every opportunity that you give us that someone could know your name. We ask on today 
that you heal, that you save, and that you deliver. We're asking on today that you provide whatever anyone under the sound of our voice listening live or on the replay, that you will bless them, you will help them. And, Lord, we pray for those in their hour of bereavement, to the Dixon family, we are praying for you, to the Comer family, we are praying for you, to all those experiencing death, Lord, we lift them up. And we want them to know they are not alone. We pray for those that are experiencing any type of ailment or sickness. We decree and declare the word is that you were wounded for our transgressions. You were bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon your shoulders. And by your stripes, we are healed. We believe you. We trust you. We thank you in advance. We ask, oh God, that you keep us until next time. Thank you for this opportunity to serve you. Thank you for our wonderful producer, Dr. Kimmy Robinson, our relation family, to every listener listening in. We say thank you to my husband and my family. Thank you, oh God. Continue to heal relationships. Continue to bless our families across the land. Father, we need you more than ever. Continue to bring justice where there's been no justice. Continue, O oh God, to pour your spirit upon flesh that we may come to know you and serve in the kingdom of God as you would have us to do. Forgive us of our sins and give us a heart to forgive others. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. We thank you again for listening to the Just For You podcast with Pastor Michelle Y. Wright. And we're looking for it, as the Lord says the same, to see you next Wednesday right here on Elation Radio. God bless you. me mm-hmm.
simple. 